mendelspark.com Advancing life science research, connecting people and ideas. Every day we read a lot about the genomics revolution here in America. But what's going on around the world? To answer this, we're at Affymetrix and we're joined by Chris Barbazette. Today we're at the offices of Burl & Company with CEO Steve Burl. Steve hardly needs an introduction in our industry. Today our guest is Susan Molino. So when I would bring things that I thought were painfully obvia, obvious up in environments like Merck, um, that's considered rebellion and you know, you're, you're making waves. I had the reputation for being a rigorous scientist with a lot of enthusiasm, but perhaps somebody who was asking too many questions. <laughs> so you go into biotech, that problem goes away. <laughs> um, I think you gravitate to the place where your personality your personality allows you to be more successful. If you let the world take you where you belong and you don't fight it, you'll wind up in a place that's more suitable for your profile, whatever that is. Yeah, first, let me just show you a light course. So this is my iPhone. And so if I just put my iPhone on my chest and hold it like this, you can see my electrocardiogram. still alive. My electrocardiogram live right through my shirt. And so if you think about cell phones for a minute, there's 7 billion people in the world today. About 6 billion of them have cell phones. And because of that, we're able to literally use the cell phone as a communication device for healthcare, not just to talk to people and to pull up your favorite website. Yeah, actually, I had this conversation last week. You want to list the three biggest challenges for a computer scientist today. I would argue that they are, number one, enabling, in essence, biotech into healthcare at scale. So building it so that every single person in the world, regardless of their place in society, can have a full genetic scan, can fully understand how their body works, and can do it in a way that is insanely affordable. So to me, insanely affordable today is under $1,000. In three years, it should be under $100. Um, you know, I think, and I think it should be built into your iPhone, or you, you know, buy a thing at the, at the pharmacy, you plug it into your iPhone, you spit on it, and you install the app, and you click go, and, you know, an hour later, you get an email with the secure link to the nice little report and all that. That's project number one, and that's what we're working on right now. And I think we've, we've, we've handled all the computer science. The computer science is sorted. There's nothing there. There's some integration work. The real challenge is, and this is why I get on the sequencers, there is no little device you spit on. It's always a guy in a lab, and it's always a six-figure or seven-figure device. That's why I jump all, all over the sequencers, because they're not seriously thinking about radically changing the world. And so you can see these are some of the original masks as well as the, uh, the film, and then you can see the, the original microarray um, that was made by, uh, by our founder. So this is the very first one yep. that Steve Fodder yep, designed. Yeah, that Steve designed, developed. All of a sudden, this scientist, Darwin, comes along and said, here's where we came from. Yeah. And gives real answers. Yeah. Right? And uh, we've had scientists on the program like George Church and these guys, right? And they're really determining the future. Yeah, yeah. With the technology they're developing yeah. and stuff. Well, I mean, I, I, so I basically think two things about kind of the role of humanities and philosophy in, in particular. And I think one is, it's really important that philosophy continues to spawn new disciplines. I definitely don't think we want to sort of say, okay, we've got enough disciplines right now. You know, we can just sort of stop the philosophy program. Historically, it's produced and spawned these incredible disciplines, which as you say, are delivering all these amazing answers. And I think that, you know, we should be hopeful that more disciplines will emerge in the future out of philosophy as it becomes more, brings more of the world and more of the sort of messy cloudiness under more conceptual control. Uh -huh. I think the second thing that we should be very cognizant of is, um, is, is these moral questions. You know, those are questions which are not answered by science. And the questions about how do we treat each other, what sorts of societies are good to live in. In this industry, I mean, don't even understand the why. They haven't, yeah. The, the wafers then are cut up into an individual chip. So this is what uh, a wafer looks like when it goes through a manufacturing process. 